What's going on, everybody? It is Luke Beller, and today I thought I would do an NFL recap video. This is going to be the first part because I didn't want to put it all in one video. I thought it would be too long. So I will link the second video down below, and I'll also put in the description the teams I'm going or the games I'm going over in this video. So if you guys want to see a certain game, you know, and if it's not this video, you can get it in the second video. But to start off, we got the Titans and the Texans. Titans win this game 42, Texans 36. It was an overtime thriller. Derrick Henry rushed it in from the Wildcat formation to pull off the victory for the Titans, bringing them to a 5-0 undefeated season. Texans moving to a pretty bad 1-5. Um, but the story of this game was Derrick Henry just completely dominated. He had 212 rushing yards and two touchdowns on 22 carries, and he also had like a 94-yard rushing touchdown. He was a beauty. I'm a Derrick Henry fantasy owner. Picked him in the first round of my draft. I bet some of you guys did as well. And so he got me 38 points in my uh, fantasy league. I'm still in first place. So things are going well there. Derrick Henry dominated um, this game. And Ryan Tannehill was clutch in the end of this game. Um, to come tie it up, he was 8 of 9 for 76 yards on a touchdown on this one. Uh, basically tying drive, passing it to A.J. Brown for a touchdown with four seconds left in the game to force the overtime. Um, so honestly, the Texans put up a great fight against this team. Um, Watson dominated 28 for 37, 335 yards and four touchdowns. So honestly, both of these defenses just played pretty pretty poorly, as you can tell from the insanely high score, but the Titans did pull it off with Derrick Henry just, just dominating. All right, so the second game going over, Ravens 30, Eagles 28. And honestly, you would have thought coming into the Ravens probably would have dominated this Eagles team. This Eagles team it was 1-3-1 coming into the game, and they're missing like seven other starters because of injuries, plus Carson Wentz has been playing just like pretty badly this entire season. So you would have thought Lamar Jackson coming in here with this awesome Ravens defense would just light up this Eagles team. And honestly, it did not happen. I'm guessing Ravens fans are a little bit worried, even though they pull off the win. I mean, to only beat the Eagles by two, maybe it was just a bad game for this Ravens team. But um, I thought you would have expected much more uh, from this Ravens offense, from this Ravens defense as well. So the Ravens were up 17 a year going into halftime. Um, but then the Eagles put up 270 yards in the second half. 270 of the 364 yards. So the Eagles did come back. They put up a fight. Um, and even coming to the fourth quarter, the Ravens were up 26 to 6, I believe, or 20 something like that, around 26 to 6. And the Eagles scored 22 points um, in the fourth quarter. Carson Wentz had two, you know, great drives in the um, in the fourth quarter. And one of the things that sort of held the Ravens team back in this game um, was they had 14 penalties, 11 on the offensive line. And um, in the second half, the defense allowed three 40-plus yard plays. So they gave up a few big plays, which really kept this Eagles team in the game. So if we take a look at Lamar Jackson in this game, he went 16 for 27, 188 yards, and one touchdown pass. And, uh, you know, those numbers aren't very exciting, but he did put up his first 100-yard rushing game. He had eight carries, 109 yards, and a 37-yard rushing touchdown. So that was a... Um, you know, great game from him. He's on my fantasy team as well. So, you know, back-to-back -back these games, Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, they really honestly carried my fantasy team this week. Um, you know, it's a nice, they're a nice little duo to have. They put up lots of points. And even though this Ravens defense did, you know, give up some big plays in the second half, they really allowed Carson Wentz and the Eagles team to stay in the game. Um, they did finish with three forced fumbles, 16 QB hits, and six sacks. So they still played pretty well. They just gave up some big plays. And of course, Carson Wentz has just had a lot of problems with keeping the ball. You know, he's just been giving it to the other team. And um, you know he just, he just hasn't really looked this good this season. I honestly thought that um, he was going to dominate this year. I thought Carson Wentz would dominate. I was clearly wrong. I put out a video a long, long time ago, probably when I only had like 10 subscribers. It's probably good you didn't watch it. No one was really here to watch that video. But I talked about how he was my sleeper, one of my sleeper quarterbacks uh, for fantasy. So luckily my channel wasn't big. So no one probably listened to me. If you did, sorry, I was wrong about Carson Wentz. But all right, so the third game I'm going over is going to be the Falcons Vikings game. Falcons fans, I bet you're pumped. You got your first win of the season. Falcons are now one and five. It's going to be tough for them to come back from, uh, you know, starting off with five losses. Maybe they can just dominate the rest of the season. Who knows if they actually will? But for us Packers fans, if you're a Packers fan watching this, you know the Vikings. It's it's nice seeing the Vikings lose. Even though the Packers lost this week, it's nice you know seeing the Vikings lose as well. One and five for the Vikings. So now both of these teams are one and five. Falcons win the game, forty to twenty three. And um, things just went south for this Vikings team just right off the start, right from the start of the game. Kirk Cousins threw three interceptions in the first half. And if your quarterback throws three interceptions in the first half, there's there's probably no way you're going to win that game. So, uh, so Kirk Cousins put them in the hole from the beginning of the game. Falcons were up 20 to 0 going, going into halftime. Um, Matt Ryan threw pass, touchdown pass to Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley in the first half to put them up uh, 20 to 0. And um, it was actually 33 to 7 midway through the fourth quarter, but the Vikings got like two garbage time touchdown passes. So honestly, this game was 
Honestly, not as close as it may have seemed. It doesn't really seem that close, 40 to 23, but they put up two garbage time touchdowns. So it honestly was a even bigger beatdown by this Falcons team. Matt Ryan dominated 30 for 40, 371 yards and four touchdowns. Julio Jones finally coming back healthy. Eight receptions, 137 yards, and two touchdowns for Julio Jones. Um, so great game from this uh, Falcons passing offense, from this Falcons... So great game from this Falcons passing offense. Julio Jones coming back and igniting this team. Kirk Cousins still did finish with 343 yards, three touchdowns, but those three interceptions in the beginning, just just can't do with those. You just can't do with those if you want a chance to win. Um, and Justin Jefferson had a great game for this Vikings team. Nine receptions, 166 yards, and two touchdowns. So great game from him. But Falcons, first win. There you go. All right, so the fourth game going over Steelers, Browns, Steelers 38, Browns 7. So this game, honestly... I was excited to see how this game would turn out because this Browns team is honestly shocking me, shocking probably lots of people. Um, Browns coming in four and one, Steelers coming out coming in four and zero. Um, but the Steelers did pull off the victory, thirty to seven. Steelers move into undefeated season, five and zero. Browns now four and two. Can they continue to pull off some victories? Who knows? We'll see exactly what happens later. But um, the Steelers started this one off strong, twenty four to zero after picking off Baker Mayfield two times. Um, they also got a pick six off of him, just as us Packers fans got yesterday. Um, so I know your pain Browns fans pick sixes are never fun to watch um, if your team throws them and honestly this game was dominated by the Steelers defense pretty much from the beginning um, their defensive line just dominated um, they hit Baker Mayfield tons of times he ended up actually coming out of the game because I think he already had like a rib injury or something and they're probably like we got to get this guy out they're going to kill him if they continue to hit him so many times so this Browns offensive line did very poorly the Steelers front seven dominated seven QB hits um, on the um, on the Browns offense and on 11 possessions the Browns had six punts three turnovers on downs and two interceptions and um, Browns only ended up with 22 carries 75 rushing yards and this Browns team is very focused on the run you know of course they had Nick Chubb before he got injured hopefully I mean he'll probably be back in the next few weeks but um, they've been running with Kareem Hunt also on my fantasy team but he didn't really do that well Kareem Hunt only had 40 yards so they held him to 40 yards and honestly, I feel like that's a pretty good, um, you know, pretty good job from that Steelers offense because the Browns have been pretty good um, on the ground, but they held them to 75 yards. And uh, Ben Roethlisberger honestly didn't have to do too much. 14 for 22, 162 yards, one touchdown, 101 rating. Um, they brought in Mason Rudolph in the fourth quarter. That's why probably Ben Roethlisberger's stats don't look maybe as good as they should have been. And then uh, James Conner. Running it for the Steelers, 20 carries, 101 yards, one touchdown, averaging 5.1 yards per carry. He has been a great back this uh, this season so far. And then Chase Claypool sort of kept up his hot streak, you know, because he dominated with like that four touchdown game. Was it last game? I think it was last game. Maybe it was the game before. Don't remember. But he had four receptions, 74 yard, four yards, and then a rushing touchdown. So that Steelers team dominated the Browns. Um, fifth game, two more to go. We got the Colts Bengals. Colts. Barely pulled this one off, 31 to 27. It was probably a sad one if you're a Bengals fan. The Bengals started up 21 to zero, and um, you know Bengals fans were probably watching just like I was starting to watch that Packers game yesterday. We're up 10 zero. I'm like, ooh, ooh, this is good. This is good. And then uh, just downhill. So Bengals just went downhill after being up 21 to zero. Um, the only good thing for this Bengals team, AJ Green seemed to revive himself. Eight receptions, 96 yards. Good job, AJ Green. Good job. But it was the second quarter that really got this Bengals team in trouble. Rivers threw for like 250 yards in the second quarter alone, and that really got them back into the game. In the uh, fourth quarter, Rivers threw a touchdown pass to Doyle for a um, 28-27 lead against this Bengals team. And then the Bengals came in, picked off Phillip Rivers, but um, Randy Bullock missed a 40-yard field goal. So, yeah, you, you probably can't do that if you want to win. They probably would have been up at that point, but they weren't. But then there was one more chance, one more chance for Joe Burrow. He got the ball back with four minutes to go, down four. Could Joe Burrow, rookie, come in, number one overall pick, and upset this Colts team? Nope, nope. Came in through a pick. That was that. Colts pull off the 31-27 victory after starting down um, behind. And, um, yeah, I mean, Burrow finished 25-39, 313 yards. That's not too bad. But zero touchdowns and one interception. So not a great game from Burrow. Still did put up those yards, but no touchdowns from him. T. Higgins put up six receptions, 175 yards for that Bengals team. So Colts, great game. You guys are 4-2. and two. You're, um, you're my fantasy defense, so please keep it up. You guys didn't do great this week, but um, I, I expect more from you in the future. Last game, 
We got the Detroit Lions and we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Lions pull off the victory, 34. Jaguars, 16. Jaguars moved to 1 and 5. Not looking too good, Jaguars. Lions, 2 and 3. Not looking too good, Lions, but you got a victory. So maybe there's some hope for you guys um, in the future. But um, really, in this game, what it came down to was this Lions team honestly held the Jags to, um, you know, they held them. What am I saying? I don't know. But they held them when it came to rushing the ball because this Jags team came to this game. Ranked around 10th in rushing offense when you look at like uh, efficiency, basically. And the Lions were second to last in their run. So honestly, I would have expected the Jaguars to put up more yards against this Lions team. James Robinson has been very good, um, but he only got 29 yards and 12 carries. So this Lions team held up strong. Matt Stafford, 19 for 31, 223 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Honestly, not a great game for him. He played okay, but not like a, it wasn't a stellar performance. But um, the big one of the biggest things for this Lions team, DeAndre Swift, 14 carries, 116 yards, and two touchdowns. And Adrian Peterson got a touchdown as well. So um, their running, their running offense was very good this week, and their li- their defense held up. So Lions pulled out a victory, moved to two and three. But those are the first six games I'm going over from Sunday. I will do the next six probably. I'll put out a video in like the next eight hours. I will link it down below right after I post it. So if you're watching it really early, you'll probably have to wait a little while for the second part to come out. But if you're watching it after like eight hours, you should be good. It should be right down below. Um, but that's going to be all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button as always. Um, sorry, that was a little that was a little too much. But um, if you guys want to see some more NFL content, some more Packers content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all you guys coming in, all you new subscribers who have come in this past week, like 15 or so of you guys, if, you, if you're one of them. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. But that's it. That's all. Um, yeah. Hopefully right after this I can get my uh, my outro in. But um, one of my hard drives that I had sort of got erased, and I might have lost it. So maybe you won't get an outro. It's a mystery. You're about to find out. See ya.